Here's your tropical update for Sunday evening and things are busy out there in the tropics. We're trapping two spots with potential development. And then of course we've got Hurricane Barrel. That's Barrel right there. Spot that came off the west coast of Africa a few days ago has a 70% chance for development. It's right here. It's going to follow in the footsteps of Barrel and try to develop. We have a long time to watch that one. We're also watching this spot in the southwest Gulf of Mexico. This spot has an 80% chance for development but it's about to run out of real estate as far as warm water is concerned because what there is that this is going to move into Mexico here pretty quickly. It has increased the surf a little bit on the upper Texas coast this weekend. There is a rip current advisory in effect because of that. We take a look at this. There is a broad circulation. In fact, zooming in and looking at a little tighter wind field, a wind field is trying to close off right there. So maybe this gets named a tropical depression before it moves inland as we head into Monday. This will be a big rainmaker for central Mexico over the next 48 hours with flash floods and mudslides in play there. Big picture, there's Houston. And there is Hurricane Barrel, and Barrel has really cranked over the last 48 hours, going from a uh, tropical storm to now a major Cat 4 hurricane. Wind sustained at 130 miles an hour. This is the 4 p.m. advisory on Sunday. It's moving west-northwest at 18, pressures down to 960 millibars. When that number drops, the winds increase around the lowering pressure at the center of the hurricane. You can really see how perfectly symmetrical this is. Look at that eye. That is just incredible as uh, nature releases all this heat energy. And one of the reasons why the storm is so strong is because there is unusually warm water out here for this time of the year. In fact, temperatures across the Atlantic Basin are near record or above record that we've that we've measured for this early in the season to be so warm. We also have very light upper level winds. Notice how you have the upper level clouds spreading out very symmetrically away from the storm. So think of that as the exhaust. The exhaust is wide open on the storm. And for the moment, it's in a really good spot to strengthen. That is not good news for the Windward Islands of the Caribbean. So these are hurricane warnings. Bridgetown to Scarborough, tropical storm warning, Fort de France, and then watches further north and south. This barrel is going to push through here as we head into Monday as a Cat 4 hurricane. Going to take a very hard hit where it does make direct landfall. And if you're wondering if this is unusual, it is. Uh, it's unusual to see this strong of a hurricane in the month of, of June. Uh, it's also unusual to see a hurricane develop in this spot in June. Normally in June, this is our main development region, Gulf of Mexico, Western Caribbean, East Coast of the United States. But that is where our hurricane barrel has formed and become Cat 4. These are September development areas. This is much more likely to form in the month of September when things have warmed up and upper level winds have settled down. But instead, we happen to have those conditions here in the month of June. And so, yes, it is unusual, not unheard of, but unusual to see a storm that strong in that position this time of year. Forecast track from the Hurricane Center does take this through as a Cat 3. Uh, the uh, Caribbean Sea, perhaps passing just south of Jamaica, south of the island of Hispaniola. And then at the moment, the cone most likely takes the storm into the Yucatan Peninsula. However, we're going to have to watch this very, very carefully. If the storm is able to ride along the northern edge of that forecast cone, you know, it could shoot the gap between Cuba and uh, the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. That would keep it over water, and that could allow it to be a stronger storm if it were to get into the Gulf of Mexico. That is still a question mark. There are still models. In fact, we can look at the spaghetti plots and you'll see it does range as you get out in time going into Friday of this coming week. You know, it ranges from Havana to uh, Nicaragua and Honduras. So there's, there's a wide possibility of spread here. If it does go into Central America, that would eat it up pretty quickly. It could cross the Yucatan Peninsula and still get into the Gulf as a diminished system. We've seen that before. We'd have to watch that scenario carefully. And then if it were to ride on the right hand side of that cone, it could shoot the gap and get in here unscathed. So that is still, you know, we're still six, five, six days out from that. So it's something to watch very, very carefully. It's nothing for us to be panicked about right now. We don't know where this is going to end up, and we're not, uh, we don't know if it's going to end up impacting the continental United States or not. But this is a great time to just review your plan that really everybody should just be doing at the beginning of every hurricane season, regardless of whether there's a system out there or not. If you're on the coast, uh, Galveston, Bolivar Peninsula, Surfside, know your evacuation plan, know your route, and know where you would go if we were to be threatened by a big storm this season. If you're inland, you know, you would hide from the wind in your home. That's the safest place to be if you don't have to evacuate. 
You want to have supplies, food, water, medicine for five days. So you can stay home and just kind of camp out for five days if we were to get hit by a strong storm. And everyone should be monitoring the forecast each day. At least once a day, watch the weather. Watch it twice a day is even better, once in the morning, once in the evening, so nobody gets caught off guard in case we are threatened by a large storm this season or if Beryl ends up being one that threatens us. We'll keep you posted as we head through this week of watching the tropics very carefully.